Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing another Marley Lily bag inspired tumbler tutorial. So a few months back, I had done a tutorial on one of my favorite weekender tote and makeup bags. And we came up with this design. I absolutely love it. I have a dress in this print as well with a matching mask. And it's just one of my favorite prints. And so once I got this new Weekender tote and makeup bag combo, I knew I had to make a tumbler for it as well. I love going on trips with this super cute bag set. I love the print. I love the leather with the polka dot. And so today's tutorial, I will show you how I created this look on a tumbler. You're gonna find all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for me there as well. And if you wanna pick up your own Weekender tote set, I will show you where I get all these cute bags. I am not sponsored by MarleyLily.com, um, but if you guys are watching, Marley Lily, Hollerick Girl, I love your products. I think they're fabulous and so super cute. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so you wanna start with a fully prepped and sanded cup as usual, and I've already base painted it black with some flat black spray paint. All right, and then once that spray paint dries, you want to start by doing your polka dots. Now, I have my bag here for reference, and I'm using an acrylic paint marker from Arteza in white. You could use any kind of acrylic paint marker you want. This is just one that I had on hand. I will put a list of all my favorite acrylic paint markers down below in the description box if you need to pick one up. But this process is fairly simple. We're just going to make kind of random dots. You'll notice that the pattern of the dots on the bag are not perfect. And so that made my job a lot easier when painting these on. I just sort of scattered them in different shapes and sizes but I did work row by row to ensure that I had pretty like even um, distribution of the dots, I guess. So there was a little method to my madness. But anyway, we're just gonna go all the way around the cup with these dots. It didn't take me too long. I think I spent about no more than 30 minutes on this. And then once I got to the other side, I did leave a couple inch section without dots because I was gonna cover that up later anyway. As soon as this is dry, you can epoxy right over it. I forgot to film uh, me epoxying. <laughs> Sorry guys, I totally forgot. But basically you just apply a coat of epoxy over that acrylic marker. You don't need to seal it. Um, and then I let that coat of epoxy dry for at least eight to 12 hours before we moved on to this step. Next, I'm gonna mask off where I'm going to place the leather portion of our design. I decided that I wanted to tape off the leather sections really similar to how they look on the bag. So I'm gonna do one strip of leather down the middle of the front and I masked that off using just regular painter's tape and kind of eyeballing roundabout where I would want that strip to be. Before you put tape on your cup, especially with this thin layer of epoxy, you want to run the tape along your clothes to kind of take off some of the stickiness. Otherwise, you might risk pulling up some of that epoxy. Once I had the center strip masked off, I wanted to mask off the bottom half inch of my cup. So the whole bottom rim, I wanted to make leather as well. And since I'm working with a cup that is kind of curved, this is a 20 ounce traditional from Craft Haven. I'm gonna use electrical tape for this uh, bottom line here, just cause it's a little more flexible. And I'm pretty much running the tape along the natural seam of the cup. If you saw earlier, this cup does have a seam to the bottom rim. So I'm placing this electrical tape kind of in line with that. 
I'm going to trim off that excess there and then we will also trim off that excess blue painters tape that came into the bottom section because we don't need that there keep in mind is that we want to keep our lines for the masked off sections for the leather really really straight and beautiful um, because they are going to be a major part of our design here I'm going to mask off the remainder of my cup with some saran wrap and then we're going to spray paint what will be the leather sections with this brown espresso satin spray paint from rust-oleum I'm going to let that dry for about 30 minutes or at least until it's dry to the touch and then I'm going to use my Arteza acrylic paints. The colors that I ended up using were Mars Brown, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, and Oxide Yellow. These come in a large pack of the premium acrylic colors which I will have linked down below. So I'm just gonna squirt out a little bit of each color. I initially started with just the, Mar I think it was the Mars Brown and the Oxide Yellow. And I'm gonna get like one of those natural sea sponge, um, I don't know, like a bath sponge. You can find these in Walmart in like the bath area or even the craft area, I think. And I just rip off a section of that sponge and then we're just really going to sponge paint layering the colors. You'll notice that I pounce in both colors so that I get a variant of the colors when I go to pounce it onto my cup. This is going to create depth and texture and it looks so much like leather, especially when we do it over that dark brown for that beautiful contrast. And once I got fairly good coverage with those first two colors, I went in with the other two colors and started adding those in, kind of testing what they looked like uh, and like the variants of the colors on my parchment paper to make sure that I liked the look of it. And then I just went for it, all right? And just keep layering up those colors until you get a texture and a color that you like. I have my bag close by so I can just kind of see what everything looks like. By the end, my palette was sort of a hodgepodge of all four different colors. And I think that really helped to create this like beautiful kind of, I don't know, textured leather look. So that's what we're going for. I love this idea because I think that you could achieve different shades of leather, different like cognac shades or tan shades, but look at how perfect it went with the bag perfectly. And I just kind of kept working with those colors until I got the perfect match done I immediately removed the tape and the masking I didn't want that to dry with all the paint on there and risk like pulling up some of the paint so we just removed our masking and then very carefully <laughs> and then we want to let this dry for a solid hour or so and or until it's like completely dry to the touch before we epoxy over it All right, and again, you do not have to seal acrylic paints. You could just paint right over it. Uh, it was a little hard for me to <laughs> epoxy over this just because that paint looks so authentic and had such beautiful texture once it dried, um, but whatever. So I've got 20 milliliters of epoxy here and I'm just gonna spread this on like I normally would. And we wanna let this dry for about eight to 12 hours before we move on to the next step. All right, so my cup's been drying for about 12 hours now and I'm ready to do my sanding. I wanna sand along the top rim here like I normally would and expose a fine line of stainless steel. This is where my final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our cup. So once I'm done with the sanding, I'm just going to rinse this off with some dish soap and water, dry it off really well, and then we're ready to do our decals. I created this diamond monogram using an SVG uh, set that I bought on Etsy. It's basically a set of all those diamond letters. Um, there's like one SVG per letter of the alphabet that comes with this listing. And then you sort of piece it together in Cricut Design Space. It was really easy to do. The vinyl strips are basically like rectangles that we sized at 11.5 inches wide by point 
one zero inches tall okay so we have a really thin wide rectangle and that's what we're going to use to line out our leather i'm going to transfer on my decal like i normally would being sure to measure twice so i only have to cut once all right, and then once I've got my monogram on there, I am going to take those vinyl strips that we created and I'm going to line the leathered sections with those. I chose black just because I thought it created a really nice clean look and I just trim the excess with my craft knife. All right, and then once I was done with all that decal work, we were ready for our final coats of epoxy. Since I just used regular Orcal 651 black vinyl, I didn't feel the need to seal it. I am, however, going to wipe off my cup really quick with some tack cloth to remove any kind of dust or debris that might have been on there. Um, and then we will apply our final coat of epoxy. This particular cup took two final coats, <laughs> which is kind of the usual, I guess, for me, um, before it was completely smooth, and then we were done. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I absolutely love how this came out. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and if you like my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a new video i upload every wednesday and saturday thanks for watching we'll see you soon And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.